The following is a presentation of the Control Trends Podcasting Network. Hi, welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart buddies video casting podcast for the week ending July 14th, 2019. This is Eric Stromquest, and this is episode 323, where we talk about all things smart building controls and HVAC controls and what would a conversation about controls be without the smartest guy in the room the man the myth the legend the one the only Kenny Smyers the control man from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania man Kenny welcome to the show big dog well, thank you, Eric. And I'm the only person in the room, so I got that hands down. So uh, I'll tell you what the uh, see see how smart you are. You picked up on that, dude. You <laughs> totally picked up on that, man, because that was totally true. And then now you, 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 I was trying to paint you truth in the best light, but you're the smartest guy in most rooms. Let's let's be <laughs> about that. I tell you what, we've been hanging around with so many smart people. I uh, I, I I feel humbled by some of the extraordinary people. Uh, we've got some neat stuff coming up, but uh, yeah, it's an industry that's uh, getting smarter. Uh, this disruption and all this, uh, this, this, it's causing us all to learn new things and get comfortable with new technologies and, and, uh, well, and, and new, as we'll discuss later in the show, and uh, sort of uh, new dance partners, if you will. So big news that uh, we dropped on Control Trends this week, and we're going to be uh, following up on that later in the show. So you're not going to want to miss the people we're interviewing this week. And we're not going to tell you who they are. You're going to have to hang around uh, and right. hear it. But uh, good stuff coming up here. But, dude, how was your – we were off last weekend. How was your Fourth of July? It was very nice. Uh, as you know, we're being uh, – we're weather challenged uh, around the western Pennsylvania area. Even today is another just – uh, you know, tropical storms in, in Pennsylvania. It doesn't make sense, but we're getting rain beyond uh, record setting rain. Fourth of July psh, came out, sun, beautiful. Uh, we had a beautiful day uh, for picnicking and then uh, did some barbecuing. And then in the evening had some fireworks. Very pleasant, very nice. So uh, how was yours? Uh, you were at the lake house, right? Yeah, yeah. I got to tell you a story, man. Uh, most of our, you probably saw the movie Pretty Woman, right? And, mm-hmm. and uh, if you hadn't, it's, you know, with Richard Gere. 20 Julia times, yep, yeah. Yep. But, uh, but there's a scene in the movie where Richard Gere takes Julia Roberts shopping, right? And, you know, they just basically, all the people come out because Richard Gere's this really rich guy and they just bring all the stuff out. So, so keep that in the back of your head as I tell you this story because – we went up our lake house and I went up early with my daughter, Evelyn Grace, who's six. And uh, so we had three days up there before Anna and Axel came up and Evelyn has decided she likes to fish. So, um, you know, I got her a little fishing pole and we would put the bread and she put it underneath the dock and she caught a couple of fish. She was really happy. She started naming them and all. So, uh, so then, you know, we see these bass underneath there and she goes, well, dad, how come the bass aren't going for the, uh, for the bread? Like, well, you're using the wrong bait, honey. I mean, you got to learn how to use the right bait. She goes, what kind of bait, what, what do bass like? And I go, well, I think they like worms. She goes, well, let's get some worms. Where do we get worms? So we get the worms at the store, right? And so, uh, so anyway, she wants to go to the store, right? They go, no, 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 it's too late. We'll go tomorrow. And uh, so anyway, wakes me up bright and early in the morning. Yeah, dad, let's go get the worms, right? <laughs> Cool. So, uh, so I'm going, okay, so this is kind of interesting. So uh, anyway, we find this little country store because we're up in the mountains in North Georgia and it's just really quaint, really beautiful lake. And, you know, the store that I went to as a little kid, right? So it's been around forever called Alley's. Uh, Lamar Alley was the guy's name. So I go in, I said, do you guys have any worms? And they go, of course we have worms. And kind of like the scene out of Pretty Woman, it says, well, what kind of worms do you have? We got this kind, this kind. And I go, we'd like to see your worms. Kind of like the Richard Gear did, which you bring it all out. So anyway, long story short, they bring out these three or four different uh, uh, containers with different type worms, and they take the tops off. And my daughter's looking at them and looking at this one and poking this one and this one. So anyway, she got down to red wigglers or night crawlers, and she opted for the night crawlers. So there we go. You know, so we pack them up, we go back, and and I thought she was going to be sort of freaked out about putting them on the hook, but she had no problem at all. Put some, put them on the hook, and. Talk about a kid who is patient. She sat for hours, you know, in there, in there fishing. She caught a couple more fish, never caught a bass. But uh, I told her she couldn't talk in there. My daughter's just nonstop talker because it would disturb the fish. And she could sit for hours and not say a word. And she'd catch a fish and she'd call me and that'd be that. But uh, So big time, big time for us at the 14th. Well, that's a great experience. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, the, uh, it looked pretty in a uh, very, very nice area. So it's, I didn't realize Georgia had mountains. What's the elevations? 
Well, it's, it's, it's the uh, Appalachian Mountains. It's the, it's the beginning of them, so they're high. And the mountains sure. sit right there in the lake. But well, I, told, I told the story kind of for a reason, Kenny, because uh, as marketing mercenaries, we always need to have metaphors and stories. So if you're not getting the sales that you need or want, you might be using the wrong kind of bait. Oh, that's it, man. Oof. Shoe <laughs> silk. Swish. Swish, swish, swish. Well, <laughs> well dude, listen, we, uh, I think we probably need to catch up with our community a little bit. We've been, uh, we've been on the move, as you know. Uh, we've already reported on being up at uh, Realcom Ibicon in Nashville. For our community who didn't catch up on this, we actually went to Washington, D.C., and uh, that was quite a trip. How about updating them on our, our D.C. trip? Well, I'd love to. The, uh, we covered the DISTEC. Uh, they give an award out every um, two years to the most unified integrated building. And out of 500 buildings, the 555 Market District building on 12th Street in Washington, D.C., Northwest, won. And we had an opportunity to go inside that building and, and, and witness firsthand the technology, this unified integration. And it was enormously impressive. I, I, the, everybody, the high caliber people, the folks from uh, the... Uh, smart uh, building technologies. Uh, you know, we mentioned uh, Jan Palmer from uh, the Smart Buildings Program Americas for Vice President of JLL. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just a whole bunch of people that are really uh, focused on taking a property that was 20 years old and, and bringing it up to uh, future proof standards. In other words, they put in a framework, um, an acuity framework that had the ability to integrate every single IT based uh, product controller application in the building. So what you had was an incredible screen for the, the uh, occupants. You had the ability for merchants to do, uh, you know, uh, IP merchandising on, on the same network that everybody's using for everything. You had voice activated uh, light control, uh, heating control, things that, you know, we'd been writing about for many years and we knew they were there. And we had all the touchy feely stuff back in the comfy days uh, that really made sense that it would improve and enhance the occupant experience to the point where you would, if there was any hindrances uh, for productivity based on the room or the environment, and we spend 90% of our lives in buildings, one building or another, these guys really brought the potatoes and, 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 and they, they, it was just an incredible experience because we didn't read about it. We didn't see it on a video. We were in the ambience of the building and actually could feel what that does to the occupant's experience. No, it was really cool because some of the people that were in attendance were actually tenants in the building, right? And yeah. and it, it, it gets back to what uh, Ken Otto Sinclair from Automated Buildings has been talking about. It really is, you know, focusing more on the occupant experience. And, and I think that's becoming a differentiator. And, you know, hats off, I think it was MetLife uh, was the person that owned the building. I think he was there. Jones Lang LaSalle was the people that put it together using DisTech and several other vendors. Uh, there was a, a fabulous integrator there that uh, put it all together. And and I think to Kenny's point, what was really great was just to see that this is really resonating. The whole process that they went through to get this done was non-conventional, but I think it might become the new normal. And it, I can't remember, did we post, because uh, we actually did a live stream of uh, the walking tour of it. Did we actually post well, on, on, on the last control talk now? We had parts of it, but I think there's two uh, feeds on, on uh, YouTube that were the actual streaming that yeah. have not been posted on it. I think it's, we're going to get to that. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so we'll, we'll post that next week, but if you want to, you can go to the YouTube channel in the meantime. And speaking of the YouTube channel, Kenny, we went over 10,000 subscribers on YouTube this week. That's so we were a little over eight uh, two months ago. So the YouTube channel is, is, is really picking up at a rapid rate. So if you hadn't already subscribed to that, uh, please do. We're able to post more videos quicker up there. They all eventually will probably make it over here to the control trends channel, but you should be subscribed to both is my opinion. But, uh, so thanks to our YouTube subscribers and our YouTube community for that. That, uh, that's a benchmark for us. We're, we're very, very happy with and very proud of, but, uh, but we'll definitely get that posted on control trends. Can that be a good post for next week? Yeah. The, um, Again, congratulations to uh, you know, DisTech and, and, and the, you know, the other you know, bells and whistles were that there was no more fobs or you know, access control cards to lose. Uh, it was your phone. And so the, uh, the um, you know, smartphone first concept or whatever, you know, mobile first uh, was really apparent. And, uh, and I think what that does is it begins to say, like, it's difficult to say it'll be a specification or a standard. Uh, because it, it would, like you said, it was so many points come together, and it was it was all, uh, you know, the leadership, uh, you know, leading people from different organizations agreeing to do this, and and so it becomes a, a case study 
that the other people can look at and, and follow because it, the technology is there. As we found out in Real Car Ivy Car, we looked out on that floor and, and we saw that some of this technology has been around for four or five years. There's some of the people we had heard from Richard Newberry that, you know, they were a little bit disappointed about the rate of adoption, you know, and, and the acceptance and, and, the, and the, all the headwinds that stopped that, whether it's, you know, the uh, you know, finances, uh, you know, occupancy, you know, can't, they can't take the building and, and make the people go away, all the tenants while they're working on stuff. So, I mean, we heard a lot of really smart reasons why there's a, you know, there's a, a time and place for everything, but the technology is there. So I, I, I got to, I was just really, really interested in the fact that we got to see firsthand the Missouri test that the, you know, everything that we had read about and all the integration capabilities were actually put together in a unified integration. It just really is a superlative job. Well, it really is. And I think, you know, there's, there's a, um, I think you could say that Distech is using the right bait here, right? They seem to really be, uh, you know, one of the nucleuses of a lot of these really big prod, uh, projects. So congratulations uh, to those folks. They do a great job with their marketing department, Lauren Scott and Laura Jan Jane, the rest of the team do a great job. So, uh, but it was good stuff there, Kenny, but also good stuff, man. I mean, you know, a lot's been going on since we were last on the show. Uh, J2 is uh, innovations to come out with Fen5 and uh, good stuff with that. And yeah, well, and, and uh, you know, now that Siemens is uh, strongly behind um, J2 Innovations, you know, because uh, they've got uh, just some things going on where they're, they're getting ready to put out a project, too, where the Fin5 uh, is launched, but it's also it already has a, a nice case, uh, you know, a proof of concept project that is very impressive. Uh, and then Scott Mensch had a post come out uh, with a Fin update on Fin5. And so we're going to be putting some more stuff on that. But uh, yeah, so I, what we're seeing now is that uh, we, we mentioned how the QD just had, had that unified, uh, you know, environment, uh, unified building, unified zone space. But uh, you also had like Siemens has a total room automation. And that is really cool. It's kind of coming from Europe. I have to admit that the, the blind control and, and the shading are elements of the European configuration versus the uh, commercial configuration here in North America. Uh, and, and then they're, probably 10 years ahead of us because they've just been have they were forced to be energy misers way before we were and they don't have some of the uh, you know the 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 spread of, of interest you know the the we we have such a you know a, you know lots of different ideas on how to do things we don't make the government doesn't come in and say this is how you're going to do it and this is by the time you know where you can see different uh, china they talked about how quickly they're developing this technology it's because they they have a you know the government says this is what you're going to do and that's what you're going to do and nobody's going to say well i don't want to do it in my building or whatever it's uniformity europe has a, another uh, probably a different version of a more stronger uh, governmental regulation and and it's not a carrot it's a rod you do it or, or you pay a consequence and we're seeing now in the states uh that happening too so what we have in the show coming up is a little uh we're gonna be talking about the third manufacturer vendor that has a unified controller that has the controller that can do everything in one controller your hvac your lighting your shading and anything else you want to do it they put enough uh power in that controller that they can now give you the integrator the option of integrating everything and, and everything is conceivable can be integrated now on your network yeah. Well, I, I think that's a trend we're definitely seeing that, you know, the, you know, the unified controller type thing and more and more people are doing it at, you know, the rate at which stuff is happening is just, it's breakneck speed, Kenny, almost to the point, I think we're going to have to put a, a new product section on the website just so that people can go and check all these new products out because they're coming so fast and furious. But, uh, but dude, you know, we go from there, we got a, uh, energy efficiency, renewable job fair. So talk about that, dude. What's up with that? Well, you know, we, we, had, we are, have they try, are they trying to get our people, man, the people that should be coming in our industry? Is, are they trying to get it? Get <laughs> well, uh, they, they, I'm sure they get their share, but uh, we actually had some feedback. We had uh, some folks from the uh, federal government reach out to us and want to know some questions about, you know, were federal employees allowed to go to, to it? And I, I said, you know, we, we just kind of repurposed the post. We have a point of contact. We sent them to the right place to get that answer. But, yeah, this Thursday, uh, July 11th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, was uh, the – Looking to energize your career by the Office of Energy and uh, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, but that's really not what you know. The, the post was a little bit more about how the government is recruiting top-notch people for their different programs, and this was in the energy department, and it went all the way from the nuclear side to you know to uh, PEs and engineers, you know. But uh, it, it's uh, it says it's a. Uh, Basically, they're looking to hire. They, they've got a lot of you know, programs and a lot of money. So they were after physical scientists 
engineers and contract specialists. Uh, the only requirement that the U.S. citizen was required, but uh, they were trying to, uh, it's all about economic growth in the energy section. Uh, so the uh, key research and development needs in the energy efficiency, renewable power, and sustainable transportation sectors. So the hiring managers were right there on site, and they could take, you know, they could probably decide uh, if they somebody met their prerequisites or, or met the, uh, you know, the job role, you know, they could do transaction right there. You're hired or whatever. But uh, so it's kind of neat. The, the, the point I'm trying to make in what we're doing with control trends is that there's a lot of information that these guys put out. That's, you know, all you gotta do is go on the website and then take a look at it. But you can also find a career for certain people. That would be a good career move. Very, very cool. Kenny Smyers. And then talking about a guy who just knows the info, baby, want to make money in this industry. Our buddy, Ron Zimmer, we caught up, caught up with Ron from CABA. And, you know, if you don't know who CAB is, they, they are like a think tank, man. They collect information. They do studies. They're fu heavily funded by the major players. But it's kind of like if you want to know what's going on, and, and not just based on conjecture, but based on actual data, CABA is the place you want to go. And Ron Zimmer's a great guy. And in this particular study they've done, Kenny, it's, it's about how to make money in the industry, man. So it's the facts and figures about, you know, what do people do to make money in the industry? So it's, I think it's a great study. Ron's agreed to give um, – uh, you know, uh, an executive summary of this out. If you, I forget what it was in the video, it was something in the video. If you said, you reached out to him and he gave you a link and said control trends or Ken and Eric are great or, um, you know, <laughs> that, that they would, uh, he would give you this free executive summary, which he's charging everybody else for. So I think it's a pretty good deal. Ken and I are trying to get you guys freebies as much as possible. That's what yeah, we, we wonder how uh, Steve Shaw worked out with the hats last, last control trends. Uh, or control I don't know about the hats, but he got, he, 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 uh, People asked him to bring the purple suit back out, man. So I sure did. All right, Eric, next we have the Belimo update on new ball valves, new download center, and efficiency through training at Belimo University. So it's a great post. Uh, again, uh, the, a lot of the information that you need to make decisions about valving and about actuators, uh, you know, there's a lot of very good uh, tools, uh, sizing charts, and, and, and different things, uh, you know, all electronic on Belimo's website. And uh, But also the... Uh, They've really got this, this, this technology to the point where uh, we thought it was kind of cool when they came out with the MFT, that multifunction technology where you didn't make any mistakes. If you needed 0 to 10 or two, 4 to 20 or 2 to 10 or floating, you know, if you put the MFT there, you were covered because no matter what happened, you had a tool, you could go back and you could change it. You could change your speeds, you know, you could have you know, shorten your actuation times and, and different things, and it was kind of extraordinary. But then they're starting to get down to – near field communication, you know, for fast programming, commissioning and troubleshooting. That's that really cool thing where you don't need power. You know, you have the, you have the application on your phone and the battery power of the phone uh, actually makes it little enough of a uh, current to transfer the information and charge and load the information to the, the uh, control or the actuator or whatever it might be, a valve actuator, damper actuator. But, uh, it's an amazing thing. So all this coming together is you're going to have maximum energy savings with less power consumption. That's the bottom line. And zero leakage through, uh, you know, the valve, you know, so, I mean, you're just getting in that department, you're getting maximum performance from your base level components, namely your, your, your valving and your actuators. And that's just, you know, it's just awesome. Yeah, Belimo is just such a great engineering company. I mean, they do quality stuff, as, as you know. I mean, we, we handle them, you handle them. It's a great product line. Uh, but they just the quality and the innovation, those guys are not standing still, Kenny. I mean, they're smart sensors that are coming out with. They're just absolutely amazing. We'll get somebody from Belimo on to talk about that. But, uh, I mean, when Belimo gets into a market, it's just like, you know, they sort of spare no expense getting the design right and the quality right. And you and I are hopefully going to be going to uh, Mount Belimo to uh, talk to the CEO, the president up here, and, and Chad Blackmare as well, hopefully at the end of the month here. So. Well, yeah, it was pretty cool, Mount Palima. I remember when they first, uh, you know, the old Danbury, uh, my daughter went to school up in Rhode Island, and I would pass the Danbury exit, uh, you know, and we drove up and back, you know, probably 10 times a year minimum, maybe 15 times a year, and I would duck into uh, – see Belimo, you know, and, uh, and then they came out where they were moving from, you know, maybe like three, four miles away from their uh, old place to this, all it was was a hill and they had a picture, a giant billboard picture. Hey, you're Remember the one who called it, you're the one who named it Mount Belimo, man. 
I well, you know, I was just so impressed because they I, they didn't have it built yet. They had the road going up, and they had maybe a, the, the foundation was getting started, but they had the finished product on a billboard. And I started, you know, remember they, we did they, a, they, we did they, a post on that. That was back what right. four or five years ago. Oh yeah, well, the manufacturing facility is just like state of the art. I mean, right. and it's it's what you would expect from these guys. So hopefully we'll get up there and, and we'll bring the cameras and hope we get to do a walking tour of. Uh, the Mount Bulimo facility and, and talk to Jim and the rest of the team, kind of like we did with uh, Distex. So we'll, we'll keep you up posted on that. And then dude, talk about, you know, quality stuff, man. We got the director's cut of the easy IO 2019 world conference, which we covered and our friend Bo and, and uh, the rest of them put together a really great video that which we posted for you guys to see. Oops, Kenny, you just muted yourself. Looks like we lost Kenny's sound here. Buddy, what's going on, man? You're muted. Can't hear you. See you. Back. Now you're back. Okay, so as I was just saying, so great video from uh, our folks, at, friends at EZIO. Well, we talked about EZIO. Uh, we talked about uh, you know the show and everything, and we talked about the IT, uh, IP-based uh, building automation, and EZIO was all over that. Uh, the yeah. the, the uh, fabulous projects that they had uh, as case studies at their show in Amsterdam was again that the architectural layout of our you know BAS is changing, and the IP controller, these these incredible edge style controllers that have all the uh, firepower could do the you know do the processing right there instead of going up in the cloud you could do it right on on prem to use the the new words buzzwords but they they have uh set kind of a standard now where you have ip based controllers now are we're hearing it's becoming the norm that people in the, the the big metropolitan areas they want to run, they want ip controllers uh because of the bandwidth because of the the, I guess the cost structure, uh, it, when you get good at it and you learn the, the, the rules and the distances and, and where to set things, but you've got some vendors uh, we're going to be talking about here uh, a little bit later on in the show where they're taking advantage of this new movement towards IP controllers and, and the way the network's are being set up and they're making their unmanaged switches uh, you know, on, on board the controllers to take on more IP devices so that you don't have to run four or five different cat five or cat six runs so some real clever stuff and then easy is right in the mix of it uh we're really excited about the ft04 that little controller that's web enabled uh and it's got two inputs and two outputs and they did a survey and got a lot of reaction from different people of what would you prefer an analog input digital input digital output analog output and so you have kind of what the 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 feature benefits are going to be for the future of this this tiny powerful little control yeah very inexpensive and yeah and uh you know i know our buddy ken sinclair will argue for the uh the raspberry pi and i think our boys at easy i go yeah well if you want to learn to do a different programming language that's the way to go but if you, you already know how to do niagara or, or sedona just use our raspberry pi the easy io pie man i wish you called well, maybe the easy io cake well, you know, uh, how about uh, Lim Hoon Chat? One of his uh, his his futuristic thoughts was that this would become so uh, they'd make so many of them and become so predominant, they would give these away like the Raspberry Pis, like England did, uh, where they give the, every first grader that came to the school system was given this Raspberry Pi to do his homework, do his coordination with the school, uh, uh, you know, all the activities, everything was being done by their own version of a, you know, the little Raspberry Pi. So I think Lim Hoon Chat had some, some educational ideas, what he was going to do to help get more people in the business and make, make programming and everything a little bit easier by starting earlier. Yeah, absolutely. Well, dude, uh, you know, another thing that happened at uh, RealCom Ibicon was we found out that Terry Swope, the head dude at Link Spring, works with our good friend Mark Peacock. He has a new president, and she was something else. Yeah, it was uh, it was an amazing um, experience. I just lost the thread on that real quick here, so we're gonna have to do a pause. Or you can talk because I I did. Well, no, I, I, just I, can't, I can't. I can't say her name. I will. It's, let me uh, get it. I had I had it up. Durlick, Dzurik. No, she gave us the clue on it. It's, you just sounded like. Um, yeah, Zerazik. 
Okay. Melissa Derezic. Yeah. Okay. So Terry's got a new president, Melissa Derezic, and uh, it was great meeting her. You can see the interview, uh, the video interview we have posted there, which is good stuff. And then you know, our next, our next uh, post was, well, friend, we like to call him Ron Victor. And we like to go to the victors, go to the spoil. So uh, Ron <laughs> walks us through a video on that, talking about what they're up to and how they fit in. Uh, and then, you know, Kenny, you got one of your cybersecurity updates, your CERT updates, which is really good. And then, yeah, and then, well, okay. I got just, uh, again, this just good information. We, we have traveled around. The more people we bump into, uh, the more concerned we're getting that they don't have a, an onboard cybersecurity plan yet. They don't have any checklists. They don't have anything. And, and, and to see some of these really smart people have their head in the sand, it's kind of scary. So we always tell them, go into Control Trends and grab one of the posts. Go to the U.S. CERT. Any one of them has all the links to them, and it'll get you started with either the cybersecurity awareness or NIST or U.S. CERT. Any three of those, or any of those three, will get you into the main uh, labyrinth of uh, you know important information. Labyrinth. Come on, now, Kenny. Labyrinth. <laughs> uh, labyrinth. Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Okay. <laughs> you better cut that. <laughs> no, no, we're leaving that in, man. That was a vocab. Uh, labyrinth. Labyrinth. That's labyrinth. Yeah, you know, but uh, but that's good because most people mispronounce it. They call it labyrinth, and it's labyrinth. It's good to know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so good. I'm glad we got that. But hey, listen, I, I want to get through some of these because we got our guest uh, teed up and ready to go. But uh, right. <clears throat> but now one of your kindred spirits, we, we also ran into at uh, RealCom Ibicon, and he's working off of the Microsoft Azure platform. Kenny, I've talked a good bit about this and how this might affect smart buildings. And, uh, you know, he's with Bosch and doing some great things with it. But talk about the possible impact of... Uh, Let's see you take a stab at the name. Uh, Habib Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Habib Madaber. 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 Well, yeah, he, he's, Habib, Habib, man. He's, an, he's, a, he's an informal guy. Habib. He kept his. Uh, he kept his. His. He has uh, an Iranian mother and a, and a German father, or vice versa. And he is one of the smartest guys we've met. Oh yeah, good guy. Big, con big control. Stuff. Big control trends fan. It's kind of cool when you walk up to this guy and he goes, oh, "I watch you guys every week, man. It's awesome. Can I be on your show?" And you go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no problems, well, especially with the product he's got. Well, I lived in Germany nine years, and I'll tell you, Bosch is, is like Siemens. It was u ubiquitous. It was everywhere all the time, and and uh, and they made really good products, and he took very polite time to tell us they don't make this products. They are very big into cloud services, and, and they've teamed up with Microsoft to really dig deep into the building technologies with their digital twin concept and it is pretty slick i we had the opportunity to listen to his presentation but then also uh they work with a company out of texas called climatic and it's a leader and climatic is a leader a big big company of advanced building technologies delivering yeah. workplace comfort so bosch bought climatic he used to work with climatic for two years but now he's uh he's the uh, he's the business uh, development leader and i'll tell you what he's a great Guy, great personality, really good guy, very, yeah. very humorous and and, uh, and very very knowledgeable, and uh, so it was great conversation. But yep, yeah, I'm sure Bosch is going to get. I did not realize how big Bosch was in the building technologies world. So I mean, well, that's a, that's a, that's the thing about going to Realcom Ivy kind of, Kenny. You just you don't realize how many people are actually playing in the space. Right. You know, we're we're used to you know the same you know seven or eight or nine or ten names that we're familiar with, but then you, you go to something like this, and you realize how many other people are playing there and how many other people actually have traction in this space? Right. How many people maybe even have some better solutions than we do right now? So uh, I, I think if I was a manufacturer, I'd be afraid to go there. Well, here's, just, here's the kicker for me is I never even really, we had a Bosch building technologies center in Pittsburgh that I probably drove past, you know, 30, 40 times and never made the connection that they were in our, our high level, uh, you know, players in our, our, our building space. So, well, I'm going to tell you what, the guy who does get it, though, is, uh, you know, our next post, Richard Newberry, the CEO of KMC Controls. And, you know, the story, if you haven't heard it, Kenny, I've told it a couple of times uh, in the interviews with Richard, is Richard uh, works, you know, for KMC and, and runs the show there. And, and he, several years back, figured out that, you know, things were getting ready to change. And, and basically, he just kept knocking on Intel and Dell's and every, anybody else's door he could to, to see if he could collaborate with them and partner with them. And if you know Richard, he is a tenacious guy, brilliant guy, well-dressed guy. And the story goes that he kept knocking on the doors, knocking on the doors. And then one day, there's a call at, uh, at KMC headquarters, which is a small town in Indiana, right? And, and the receptionist, they go, hey, this guy's been calling us. We lost his card. You know, 
we we like to connect with him. Uh, she goes, well, can you describe him? Well, he's a well dressed well, Richard Newberry, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, but uh, but we kind of a Richard at uh, I become Rocom got his thoughts on what he's seeing there and sort of what KMC's doing. And you know, Kenny, they have a very scalable solution. You know, from there, you, know, you talk about scalable from there. They're small all the way up, and then they're they're um, and, and it's you know it's a collaboration with Intel and Dell. Yeah, well, uh, he's a consummate executive. I, I, you're right, and and he really, really feels the part well because he at the end of the interview he gives his own cell phone out. To, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Was that something? What? How do people get hold of you? Here's my personal cell phone number. I thought that was pretty courageous, you know. And uh, but yeah, so he said that we asked him, you know, "What are your thoughts? What do you take?" What he said, "Well, you got three things: open, scalable, and secure." And, and that was and, the, and, and has KMC on it. That was the fourth thing. <laughs> no, but then he went into great detail about, you know, the, um, the breakouts and what was, you know, the, the, pre, the predominant themes at, at Realcom and Ivycom were, you know, cybersecurity. And, and, and so KMC is positioned to meet all three of those criteria. They're open, scalable, and secure. And he mentions uh, with great pride that their early collaboration with Intel and Dell paid off because now everybody else is running to get to, uh, you know, collaborate with these, these, these high level, uh, you know. Uh, right. Well, and, and talk about collaboration. They actually had done a case study with a, a, a private school. And in that school, you talk about the Raspberry Pis, the students were actually working with the control system, a sort of part of the curriculum about how to, you know, have buildings be more sustainable. So good stuff there. I encourage you to watch that video. But Kenny, without further ado, our guests have been patiently waiting. I think we should bring them on if you uh, if you're going to know both these companies. So without further ado, Kenny, I'm going to introduce our guest. Let's get the, let's get this party started. All right, man. Kenny Smyers, uh, as we reported on control trends this week, there's been a big acquisition in the industry this week. And uh, I am absolutely thrilled. We're going to get to talk about that with uh, the guy that actually did the acquiring. So our first guest is the CEO of Kelly. Richard Campbell. And some people call it Kiwi, but it's actually pronounced Kelly. Richard, welcome to the show and thanks for taking some time to speak with us. Hey guys, appreciate you guys having us on and uh, looking forward to telling you about what Kelly's been up to. Uh, we got another important message to share with the Control Drones community, but uh, first, this is the first time you've been on the show, so welcome. And then second, uh, Kelly's been in the business for 30 years. Tell us the Kelly story, the background. Uh, that's true. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly's been around since 1983. You know, back in the early days of the shift sort of from pneumatics to electric and, and DDC controls, there really wasn't a supply chain. And, and Roger Johnson, the founder of Kelly, um, saw that need. He, he was a, a very innovative controls guy and saw the need for a, a new supply chain and started Kelly. Um, you know, really a pioneer in the industry. And... The, from the foundation that that he started in his garage in Bartlett, Tennessee, um, Kelly has grown into a, an international um, controls building automation supplier. The the big thing that Roger did, which you know is 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 so beneficial to us today and to our customers, is he really focused on the value add. It wasn't just about getting the right product there as quickly as possible, but how do we help the contractor do their jobs better? How do, how do we help the jobs work better? And so he, he started a custom um, services business where you know, if, a, if a contractor needs a special item, then, then we build it for them, a special sensor and a special box with a special lead, whatever it takes to make their job easier. He started a panel business, which is one of the biggest value added offerings we have doing custom panels, UL panels for the industry. And it's one of our fastest growing areas. Um, we keep adding additional offerings and we keep listening to the customer to find out what they need and then Kelly positions to, to make sure we serve those well. Okay, well, uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, Richard, Kelly just made another big acquisition. Tell us about that. Yeah, we're really excited. So we just joined forces with Temperature Control Systems out of Dallas. Um, Scott and Susan Cross have a fantastic business down there and second generation. And we were just so, so pleased and honored that 
you know, as they were thinking about how they continue to take care of their customers better, joining forces with Kelly was the right next step. So we're, we're excited about it. Um, where their footprint is, is, is where our, one of our biggest areas. So they serve the mid South and Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana. And that is, that is one of our largest customer areas for Kelly. So we're really excited about that. Um, it strategically positions us taking the strengths of Kelly and the strengths of TCS to serve both of our customer bases better. We, we truly believe it's a, a one plus one equals four or more. And uh, we're gonna be able to serve the TCS customers with more products. Um, we're gonna be able to serve the, the core Kelly customers in those geographies with quicker service. And everybody knows that the industry continues to, to put more pressure on the field um, to need need more efficient supply chains and resources. And we're positioning Kelly and temperature control systems to do that for the, the Mid-South Mid -South market. Control Consultancy, CCI, out of the Boston area. That was our first acquisition. Um, John Donahue and team joined forces with us. And, and now we, we've brought the strengths of those companies together where we're, we're shipping to New England and the, the Northeast part of the U.S. in one day. We, we've got Kelly product on the shelf and built the warehouse management systems based on the Kelly model um, to, to serve those customers much better. The second one was MI controls out of Seattle and Portland. Um, we, brought, we brought that one on about a year ago and we're in the process of integrating that and doing the same thing for the Pacific Northwest. So the Texas and, and the, the South Central region was the next logical step for us. And, and we're excited with those three, you know, amazing, strong, you know, building automation suppliers to join forces with us. Richard, I can definitely see that. And I can totally see why it makes sense for, for you guys to want to acquire TCS. But, you know, Control Trends, man, we like fair and balanced reporting. So we got a surprise guest for you here. Kenny, a good friend of ours, Scott Cross. Hey, Scott. Man, the man from TCS himself. Uh, Scotty, man, thanks for taking some time to, uh, to, to speak with us. And, man, uh, man, congratulations. Happy for you. Hey, thanks, guys. I, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, this morning to be able to, uh, to share this uh, news with uh, you and the rest of the industry. We're uh, very excited here at uh, Temperature Control Systems. Hey, we're going to get to why this made sense for TCS in a minute, Scott, but for our viewers out there who might not know, tell them about TCS. Sure. Um, as Richard had mentioned, uh, we are a second-generation uh, company uh, started in 1975 by my uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law, Ira and Naomi Goodlett. And so we started uh, just like many. Um, he was a uh, engineer and uh, service manager for Honeywell and broke out into the uh, distribution and service business uh, in 75 as a uh, single branch kind of on the cutting edge because most of distribution at that time was handled strictly uh, at the branch level of the different uh, manufacturers. You know, from those early times in 75, we uh, recognized a need to uh, expand our, our uh, geography and our offering, uh, obviously before the internet and, and other technologies. And so in order to get closer to them, you had to you had to uh, open up other branches uh, to get closer to the customers. And so over, uh, over the years, we've, uh, we've grown from a uh, single branch uh, company to now six branches uh, in two states. Um, we focus on uh, controls, uh, commercial controls, light industrial, flame safeguard, and our uh, technology uh, play is uh, we do building automation through uh, Honeywell, Johnson, Tritium, Vicon, and some other uh, manufacturers. 
to um, address the BAS needs and uh, the integration and, um, and, the, and that type of services. Good stuff, Scott. So, so TCS has been in the business for over 40 years. Um, so why did this make sense again for TCS and, and why did you pick Kelly? Why'd you go with Kelly? You know, the industry is changing. Um, we're, we're in what I see as a, a little bit of a change and a little evolution and it's uh, on both sides of the equation both on the manufacturing side as well as our customer side. And I think uh, our responsibility as a distributor uh, is to be able to serve both of those, um, those needs, the needs of the manufacturer and be able to serve the needs of our customer. That's requiring um, a little bit more resources that sometimes uh, become difficult to, uh, to acquire. So, it just, if we were going to continue to be value add as has been our uh, tradition of just not providing parts and pieces, but to be able to provide value to not only our manufacturers, but also our um, contractor and end user customers, we had to really seriously look at uh, what was necessary to accomplish that. And this, uh, this made sense. The resources that uh, Kelly has, they share many of our uh, our same core uh, competencies of providing value add to our customers, but they also had resources that we could not afford or did not have the uh, ability to uh, to utilize, and so therefore we want to be able to leverage those resources for the benefit of not only TCS, our employees, our customers, but our manufacturers as well, as we continue delivering uh, value added services. You know, Kelly uh, has probably 200 more product lines than we have. Their fulfillment is system is very robust. It's also gonna give our customers access to uh, different services and products that we didn't have uh, e-commerce and uh, digital tools, custom packaging, valve uh, assembly, calibration, and and a whole host of other products and services. So Scott, I know you're based in Dallas, but uh, in North Dallas, but you do a lot more than North Dallas, right? We have two offices, uh, branch locations in Dallas, one on the east side of Dallas, one on the west side. We then uh, also have a branch office in Fort Worth, one in Austin, Texas, and then we go across the uh, north border into Oklahoma City and Tulsa. So rounds out our uh, branch offering of uh, six branches, but also outside of that, we uh, it affords us the opportunity to serve not only Oklahoma and Texas, but also Arkansas and uh, Louisiana. Okay, so Richard, back to you, man. Seems like you're buying all me and uh, Ken's friends up. You bought our friend John Donahue up in Boston. You went out to Seattle, picked up the MI Control, our buddy Steve Rowe, uh, and now uh, call, t- us. call us. Yeah, <laughs> and now you and now you're in uh, Texas, which is a bit closer to home. Do, do you not ship to all those areas? Oh no, we absolutely do. In fact, we've got a really strong customer base in uh, in the states that that Scott just talked about. However. Texas is is one of the biggest economies in the world, and the and the region right around it. Um, getting closer to our customers in that area, and as we meet with them, they're under more and more pressure every day to to do more with less. And if we're there closer to them, having product closer to them, we're going to help them win. We're going to help them serve their customers better, and uh, that's that's good for us all. But not only geographically, Richard, but it also seems like you guys serve similar customers, right? You know, the, the crossover is not not near as much as you would think. In, in fact, there's, there's a very small group um, of contractors that we both sell a lot to. But customers buy for the, the reasons that are important to them. There are days when coming over to TCS and picking it up at the counter is exactly what they need to serve that customer. And we wanna, we wanna support that. And there are times when 
the customer needs a very broad range of products for a project and they you know they've got a little time to plan and Kelly can can serve all of those from our our big warehouse kit them and tag them exactly like the the job needs and and make sure that the customers life on the job is as easy as possible so leveraging the strengths of both of those capabilities is going to allow us to serve customers even better and uh we we plan to increase our inventory position significantly in the tcs branches which will allow our customers to you know if they want to pick it up it's it's there for them and if they want us to ship it to them then we're we're one day away via ground shipment so it gives us and our customers lots of choices in in how we how we serve them well richard i bet you all been on the phone uh talking to clients and customers and getting you sharing the good news with them sharing the story with them um so uh, how's that going for you so far for for me I, I continue to get emails and and communication from both customers and suppliers about what a what a great decision we made to to bring TCS on as part of the Kelly team. Just the reputation, the integrity, um, how well they serve the customers and manufacturers, and so I, I feel like I hit the jackpot because the, the response has been just extremely positive about the, you know, what Scott and Susan and family have built and bringing those together with what Kelly offers, they, they see as a real, real win-win. And so that's exciting, very exciting for me and reinforces, you know, what we knew, but, you know, you, you, you always love to hear, hear it from your, your customers and your suppliers. We've heard the uh, the same thing. Uh, it's amazing the emails and the phone calls that uh, I've received uh, from uh, some longtime industry friends, both on the manufacturing side, even on the distribution side, and and even our customers. Uh, all of the responses uh, that I've I've received has has been positive. Way to go! Uh, I'm sitting here looking at my desk and even got. A, um, a supplier that has contacted us and want to know what do we need to do to get on your line card. Uh, I think that in itself uh, says everything. Uh, I don't know that I've had many of those calls uh, asking how to get on my line card. And so I think that that pretty much answers uh, how the industry is responding. So Scott, man, uh, what's the reaction to your, your team members, your employees been so far? I'm very fortunate in that I have many 15 year, 18 year, you know, 20 year employees. Over the last couple of days, we've had an opportunity with Richard to visit uh, some of the branches, speak with the employees. I think uh, their response, their questions have all been positive. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm anxious, uh, you know, to continue, uh, on with this journey and uh, and accomplish the goals that Richard and I have uh, set out to do. All right. Well, Richard, I'll give you the last word. I mean, what's next for Kelly? You know, the 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 path is is still the same. We're going to keep working every single day how uh, on how we serve customers better. We're we're working on our e-commerce and digital capabilities and actually getting ready to launch some cool new tools on our website to help our customers um, to make it easier for our customers to to work with us um, we're going to continue to look for those strategic locations where we need to be to get product closer to our customer um, so every day it's all about how do we serve the customer better our team is focused on that and so we're going to be be working on investing in the tools the inventory, the systems, and the locations to make sure that uh, we're in a position to take our customers to the next level. Man, hey, thanks so much, man. Congratulations to both of you. I mean, two great companies uh, coming together, man. So uh, good stuff. Congratulations, boys. 
thanks for giving us this opportunity. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Very, very happy for Scott Cross. I think Kelly made a really nice ac- acquisition there. They're good folks there. You and I have gotten to know them, right. from, you know, Controls Group North America, and they do a good job. They have their place in the marketplace and are doing well. So appreciate their time. Well, I first met Scott many, many, many years ago. I think it was 1998 in one of the Johnson Controls meetings down in Fort Lauderdale. Somebody dared us. There was a tropical storm. And and he said, that doesn't look that bad, whatever. So they dared him <laughs> to go swimming. And he said, I'll go if you go. So we went into the ocean. It was it was, it was was a thrilling, scary, because it, it, it got worse. It was just starting. And and it was downgraded from a hurricane to a tropical storm. But I was on like the seventh or eighth floor of a, one of these hotels, and the water was spitting through the sliding glass door. You know, I woke up, and I couldn't sleep. And, and it, I don't think the building was moving, but the windows were moving and shuddering. And, and then the water was coming in about four feet into the room through the little tiny gap on on the eighth floor on the eighth floor of the sliding glass door so i put a couple of tiles and finally said heck with this it was like three o'clock and i went downstairs the whole hotel's lit up they're walking around with champagne giving people glasses trying to keep everybody sedated so 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 so, so wait so wait a minute so the whole hotel the water's coming on the eighth floor and you go downstairs no, 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 the scott, water the water wasn't coming i understand okay. but you go downstairs and scott cross goes i think we should go swimming i could totally see no. him doing that <laughs> that was later on the night in other words we we went to bed after that it was common on on us and they you know i'd never seen a tropical storm or a hurricane you know and it was kind of you know bizarre because you're watching the trees bend down and the winds are you know maybe 40 50 at about miles an hour i've been in grand forks and i've seen you know 60 mile an hour winds with arctic uh they call them alberta clippers and it'll blow you right off your feet you know so the um I don't know what happened, but uh, he, Scott was. Swimming. I know. I know what happened, man. You guys, how much alcohol did you have before you went swimming? I mean, you know, I think, that, it, was a, I think it was a tequila theme thing. That. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and and uh, Scott Cross, one of the all time great folks. I mean, you talk about was, you know a guy that if there if, if you're ever in a ballroom brawl, you want him on your side because he is he is uh, he yeah. he says what he does and does what he says, and you can take that to the bank. He's a, he's just really really good people. So again, happy very happy for Scott. And dude, we got two more posts, and then we're 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 gonna call it cookies. Don't you want to say, hey, Richard, call me, call me. Richard? <laughs> no, no, no. They'll, you know, hey, come on. You know, there's a, there's a place for everybody here, man. Because I tell you what, big companies are great. Kelly's doing a great job. But you know, there's also a place for the, the the you know the the smaller, more nimble companies too. You know, mm-hmm. so everything has its pros, everything has its cons. But I'm happy for both of them. For sure, but uh, but listen, let, let, let's let's switch over because uh, we had the pleasure to meet. Jim Young's daughter, Grace Young, and mm-hmm. Monica McMahon, and uh, you know, two actually three products that we think every control pro should know about from our friends at Optigo. So, Kenny, talk a little bit about that video if you don't mind. Yeah, I was uh, very impressed uh, with Optigo. Uh, they are just growing big. I mean, we saw them uh, probably five years ago uh, at Realcom Ibicon, and since that time, they've gone into just a you know a global player. I've heard projects all around the world where they're using Optigo to solve uh, network problems. You know, on one hand, for a contractor to 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 cover your your tail end and come onto a you know maybe add on to an existing back that you want to know what the condition of that network is before you get on it and show your customer, hey, you got issues here. You know, we got some bottlenecks here here and here uh, so they don't accuse you of whatever you do on the network that you you're the problem or whatever and then two there's a there's a there's a, a cyber security thing all of a sudden you can uh you can monitor and audit uh and activities and the activity levels so if you're getting activity a whole lot of uh you know network activity at two o'clock in the morning and it's not to do with building automation or whatever you know you've got something going on so it gives you uh that audit trail of the activity on your network and then they come right down to the uh you know they can actually help you with the management of your network so you they can take over uh, you know, the whole network responsibility. So, right. I mean, Kate, they got, we got a couple of case studies posted there. Uh, I, one of the big mysteries apparently was you talking about the backnet uh, visualizer was uh, there was apparently a big mystery at Princeton university dude, where in the middle of the night, the stadium lights would come on and wake up half the campus. They couldn't figure out what was going on. Right. And they used the backnet visualizer and they were able to figure out uh, where things were going to rise, so to speak. So, uh, but I mean, I like Ping Yao. I really like Grace Young. That's Jim Young's daughter. She's uh, mm-hmm. going to school in Vancouver and at the same time is uh, working part time with Optigo. So, um, and Jim, Jim and Janice have done a great job with her. We have to give Monica a shout out too because she really does a great job. She, she does, uh, man. She's one of the silent heroes that, uh, you know, she's always. 
looking out, uh, you know, for the best marketing interests of Optical. She does a great job. She she really does. Her, she's dedicated and passionate, and uh, and I think it has a lot to do with the growth. So good good stuff for Optigo. And I think they're only going to get Very bigger. Well, and you know, and it gets down I see, to. I see a buyout coming. I see a buyout coming. You think Richard Campbell is uh, on the phone right now? Maybe you never know. I mean, he's in the mode. He's got Kyle Cross. Now he goes against Grace Young. Man, he's rocking and rowing and Monica and Ping Yao. There you go. But, uh, dude, you know, we talk about great people, and you were telling me um, and, and did a great post on this guy because at the end of the day, it really gets back to the people. The people, to me, are the biggest differentiator. Talk to me, if you would, about Scott Hoffman. Steve Hoffman. Talk to me, if you would, about Steve, because it gets down to the people and getting their names right. You know, they have such an impact at you. But he could be a Steve. He could be a Scott. He could be a Ted. He could be a Harry. It doesn't matter. As long as he's a Hoffman and has this attitude, that's all that matters, right? Well, you know, uh, first, saying what you said about the people, uh, you know, that's so true. Uh, many, many times you've said, and I've, I've said, and we've agreed together that, you know, everybody's got a great product. Everybody got, you know, a tremendous amount invested. Everybody's, you know, needs to succeed with their products. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a very competitive arena. What differentiates one company from the other? What, what, what makes the one company A more successful than company B? It's the people. It's the energy they put into their work. It's the dedication. It's the pride. Steve Hoffman is a uh, he's a consultant engineer, uh, end user account sales specialist for Honeywell HBT and Building Management Systems. And he came into our area, which is Western Pennsylvania and and West Virginia. And he, in support of a contractor, went and did some presentations down at one of the trade shows. Uh, and his you could tell somebody's successful when people come into the, uh, the presentation and don't leave or more people hear it and they see the little gathering outside there and then they stick their head in to see what's going on. Next, you know, you've got 30, 40 people. I, I don't know what the exact numbers were, but I do tell you it was, it was very, you know, very well attended because when he talks, people listen because he really and truly knows the job. Well, he started out with the Honeywell branch. He went to a distributor, came back to Honeywell as, as in the capacity of a uh, consultant engineer, but he, uh, tends to be the one that introduces a lot of new products like Guy Zebrick and, and some of the other people that Honeywell have, Hachi, uh, Lou Jones. Uh, you know, these guys are very bright and very, very polished. And, and so Steve does a great presentation. He's come into many times uh, into areas and influenced the engineers that this is what you got to do. His uh, probably most successful presentation was the open protocols versus open systems or open systems that. versus open. I mean, that's been heavily played and uh, yeah, I've seen people pick that up. You know, I'm not saying to myself, Steve Hoffman wrote that, you know, but, but he, he came into Pittsburgh with a new thing. And again, we last had a great time with him. Remember at the Honeywell momentum, we did yeah. some interviews, but his interview was the one we stuck out uh, probably had the biggest uh, resonance because he told us so much in three minutes and 30 seconds. He said, Boom. IP controllers are, are happening, man. And the bandwidth, the advantages, the secure uh, offering, you know, the, the encrypted, decrypted, you know, this, this thing's for real and it's going to be very exciting. Well, so the, no, no, you're right. But let me ask you a question, Kenny. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite Rolling Stone? I don't really have a favorite Rolling Stone. Okay. I, so here, like so the here's Beatles. the thing. So I'm a Beatles the, guy. No, I understand. But the Rolling Stones are two, you fall into two camps. You either love Mick Jagger or you love Keith Richards, okay? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, more people love Keith Richards, and here's why. Because if the Rolling Stones never made a dime, Keith Richards would still be playing. He loved the music, and that comes across. People pick that up. If the Rolling Stones didn't make any money, Mick Jagger would be a politician. He'd be doing something else, okay? I bring this up vis-a-vis -vis Steve Hoffman because I think part of what makes Steve Hoffman so great is he loves – the business. I right. want to be around that, right? Because he loves it. He's genuinely, genuinely cares about it. And I mean, that, that kind of, that shows. So if you're looking for salespeople, looking for the right kind of bait, make sure your salespeople are more like Keith Richards than Mick Jagger. And that's your uh, marketing wow. visionary tip of the week. I'm going to put, I'm going to put another strike on Eric <laughs> right under E. That's the second one on the show, Eric. Man, you, you nailed that one. You, you did the bait thing with the fish, and then, you know, maybe some people's bait's better than others. I mean, geez, you're on a roll with this, this bait. <laughs> marketing. Yeah. Um, no, but also, uh, again, Steve has uh, early ears to what's going down, and Honeywell's introducing a new Spider 5 series controller. And we got to take a peek at it. And uh, yeah, you like it? Well, I'll tell you what, we talked earlier about the QD. Yeah, I like it. Uh, QD Distech, uh, Siemens, uh, the DXR, 
uh, the total room automation. I mean, these were kind of European uh, induced or, or just, you know, a different style because they knew how important lights were and they knew how important shading control were. And we saw down there at that five, five, uh, five market district market building. When you put the lighting and integrate it with the HVAC, you automatically bump your savings up so many percentages. And it's, uh, they, we saw that nice geographical depiction where in DC they saved by putting the lights uh, integrated with the shades and the blinds and the HVAC, the air conditioning or, or the and, and fresh air and IAQ and whatever else is going on, you save uh, instead of 27% on your energy, it, it, it bounces up to 35 or I think was it was a case we saw in DC. And so now Honeywell Spider has got a room controller. This, this, this Spider 5 benefits. It has integrated room management, Covers any application needs, so you got uh, XFMs that you can write your own programming, a powerful integration platform, single tool engineering, so there's no more spider tool. It's going to be right off of the um, the workbench, the wire sheets. You have inexpensive wiring, reuse of existing wiring, leading Beamus protocol. But they say that the first room controller supporting the programming of HVAC, lighting, and blind applications with Niagara 4 in an offline or online mode via backed MSTP. So, so they're it, huh? Well, Honeywell, you know, Honeywell's, uh, they came out with a Cyper 10, okay. 30, and 50, and now they're coming out with a Spider 5 series. So it looks well, congr like congratulations to them. Now, Kenny, here's another marketing mercenary thing. So, I mean, you remember m and the real Slim Shady? Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to pick it up and go, the Honeywell, you know, such and such control of the real Slim Shady. <laughs> uh, if we you don't like that one. Okay, buddy. Look, we've been going on too long, man. If I'm getting stupid, it's time to hop off, man. Well, congratulations. No, no, but the, you always like that Slim Shady guy, the, the m and That's another one. They always... Well, that's a great line. Uh, yeah, dude, you always get... You hit Scott Cochran with it all the time. So you call him the real... Well, that's just because he's from Detroit. Scott Cochran. But but now we got the real Slim Shady controller. Hey, I'll put you this way. If Honeywell doesn't do it, I guarantee Easy I will when they get theirs going. <clears throat> Gina, well, it's, it's, a, that, right? it's a very impressive uh, control, and and uh, again, to have Steve Hoffman come in and give the presentation, uh, it was it, 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 he was just on fire. He just he loved this thing. It, it, he was he was energized by talking about it. So when you see that kind of enthusiasm and that kind of passion for for stuff, it, it, it invigorates everybody in the room, and it makes you feel as though you've got to pay attention to this. There's got to be you know. This, this is you know, if this guy endorses it with his professional career, this thing's on track. Yeah, so there you go, man. Uh, uh, Steve, Keith Richards, Hoffman endorses it. It must be good. All right, buddy, listen, we got to hop off here, man. Special thanks to our guest this week, Richard Campbell from Kelly and uh, our good friend Scott Cross from TCS. Man, another great week on Control Talk. Now, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Remember, be bold, stay in control, stay relevant, and if you can't, at least pretend to be the real Slim Shady. Indeed, Eric. Indeed. The basic idea is Slim Shady Smires. But there's a groove that I can follow that's exactly right from All right. Slim Shady it is. Exactly right from All right. Here we go, buddy. All right. Good stuff. Sometimes when I try to reason You don't seem to listen at all I don't know if it's just a feeling yeah. Or if we are about to fall